Hey G Session viewers, my name is Alyssa Kritzman and I'm the design director for G Project, which is a public art campaign transforming negative ideas about immigrants. Because after all, we are all immigrants. Everyone has a personal journey and story about how their family found themselves in the US. Like myself, I'm a G1 on my father's side and then a G2 on my mother's side. So what does that mean? G0 means you came from elsewhere. G1, your parents were born elsewhere and you were born here. Uh, G2 is that your parents were born here, but their parents were born elsewhere and so forth. So for season three, we are very excited because we are inviting our previous G session guests to invite someone that they know and interview them to ask the big question, what is your G status? The cool thing about this is we are now creating a web of immigrant stories that are truly connected through storytelling and personal artifacts. So without further ado, please have a listen to today's session. And at the end of the video, my colleague, Richard Pelzer, will let you know how you can participate and keep up with our project. Thank you so much, Alyssa, and welcome to another G session. I'm Janice Lawrence Clark, and this evening we will be talking to my wonderful Renaissance man. That's a guest. He's not my man. He's my guest. <laughs> Alvin Clayton Fernandez. Let's meet Alvin. Hey, Janice. <laughs> How are you, Alvin? I'm well. I'm well. You look well. Thank you. So do you. Listen. I am hmm, I am telling everyone that you are my Renaissance man. You're 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 an artist, a restaurateur, you're a model, combined <laughs> with IMG. So there's so much that we have to let people know about you. But tell me this: when did you first emigrate to where 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 are you from again? Trinidad and Tobago, Hello, the Alvin. beautiful island of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. When I look, this is my countryman here. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I came in the I, I came in the mid seventies um, to the United States. To the United uh, States. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes me wonder: what is your G status? My G status is a zero. Uh -huh. Born in Trinidad, the first one to be here. So I am, I am uh, zero okay. and proud of it. <laughs> zero. Oh my God. When I was interviewed, I had to admit I was a 0 0.5. <laughs> we'll <But>. keep you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So you came here in the mid 70s. Yeah. Did you, what did you do when you got here? Did you go into to school or did you go to, to work? What did you do? How did you get well, into things? You know what? Well, first of all, I, I moved to um, Washington, D.C. So my mom was in D.C. So I grew up in Washington, D.C. area. I went to a Catholic high school there, John Carroll High School. Uh, then I went to Mount St. Mary's University. And then after that, which is also in Emmitsburg, Maryland. And then after that, I came to uh, New York, lived in New York for a while, went to California, and then back to New York uh, in the New Rochelle area. Okay, so when did you start modeling? Was um, it I, I started modeling actually after college. So I went to Mount St. Mary's on a um, soccer scholarship. And, um, you know, coming from Trinidad, you kind of have the advantage because you grew up playing soccer. So yeah. when I was in high school, I was, you know, played on the soccer team. I was a goalkeeper, got um, a full scholarship to Mount St. Mary's University. Um, a friend that I went to college with, he actually was a Wilhelmina model. And he would come to the, to the city in the summertime and did modeling. And he would always try to encourage me. He, he would look at the other models that were there. And he said, Alvin, I think you could model. I think you could model. But I really wasn't interested, to be honest with you. And um, after I was finished college, I have a degree in secondary English education and psychology. Mm -hmm. I got drafted by San Diego, actually. And um, But the year that I was supposed to go out and start, they folded the NASL, which was the outdoor soccer league at the time. And so I wasn't ready to teach at the time. So I asked my friend Colin, who was the one that actually was trying to encourage me to model, right. if 
he thought the Wilhelmina Modeling Agency would want to see me. They did. I came to New York. I met them. They gave me the whole spiel of how difficult it was for black models, yada, yada, yada. But then they said that they were going to give me a try. Um, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. I have had a 25 year career, basically. With wow. Yeah. And it was during that time that I met you because we worked you, together. Yeah, back. we met in the 90s, I think, right? Uh, or we worked in the 90s. I think we may have met before that. Right. Yeah. We met in the 80s, I believe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, um, both on, on print as well as some runway. And this was really good. And now to see that you're back modeling and, and I'm seeing your style. I, I love the scarf around your neck. <laughs> actually, this is this is one of my creations, actually. It's based on one of my paintings that I did. So after Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, I was like, you know, she's one of my heroes. And so I did this painting of her and I actually had it made into a silk scarf. Uh, Alvin, that's incredible. Yeah, so. That is beautiful. Um, is that for sale? I mean. I, I actually, I have it. It's in production right now. It's 100% um, silk uh -huh. and um, it's made in, handmade in Italy. So in like another three weeks or so, I'll have the production and I'll be, you know, listing on my website. Um, you know, where I'll be selling them. And I've already had a store on the Upper East Side um, called um, Bourbon and Bulldogs, which is really beautiful, great stuff. Uh, they've asked uh, if they can carry the scarf, but it's based on on a painting, this painting that I did of her. Actually, if you can see that. My goodness, do you paint from photographs? I mean- You know what, I, um, I get ideas from photographs. Um, and I, I put a lot of thought into like my paintings. It's like just the face alone doesn't do it for me. I come up with different things of, okay, how do I make this be relevant? How do I make it last forever? What other messages do I want to give, you know, when I do that? And so a lot of stuff is in my head. Like an example in this Ruth Bader Ginsburg painting, if you notice, like the, the, the background, her shadow is, is the scale justice the woman with scale of justice right. so you know as as a jurist so those are some of the things that i that i do i mean i also did um an amanda gorman painting because i was so impressed with that young woman oh, um, you know at, at the inauguration and so i did this painting of her oh well, let's see oh my goodness but if you notice here in this in the space here this is um maya angelou maya. almost as if she's in in the background kind of being proud of, of this young woman that's now uh, the torch has been passed to, you know? Yeah. And so I do a little bit of politics. I do a lot of, um, you know, socially conscious things. And then I have fun also, you know, my childhood was so amazing in Trinidad. So here's uh, one of my paintings that I did. It's like, Outside in the rain, you know, pouring water in your brother or whatever. I yes. saw a photograph of this and I was like so inspired. So, you know, I, I, I have fun, but there's a lot of thought in, in my work. And I have a whole political uh, show that I did at Iona College, which was called Unapologetically Me, which I actually got into right after the George Floyd thing. And and actually that was what the, the show that um, IMG saw and reach out to me for representation because now it's not so much just about how you look anymore. It's about having a platform, having something to say, having, you know, being socially conscious. And so I think that's why I'm actually even back into it, to be honest with you, because just being a face is not important to me right. or not that interesting, but being able to have a platform to say something and make a difference in, in the world is much more important to me. So that's it. Well, you've been certainly using that platform because I looked at some of the um, some of the images on unapologetically me, yeah. and I said I saw um, the calypso influence. Oh yes, <laughs> um, I saw the calypso influence in um, the painting. Um, what is it? I like to grab by by the king. <laughs> 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 you know what? That is so brilliant that you you pick that up. You know, I think as artists, if you're really authentic, your work speaks more if it comes from who you are as a person. 
and you know my Caribbean roots, we have this, we love to give fatigues, right? <laughs> and you know we're sat satirical in a lot of ways. Right. So yeah, so the, the 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 painting of the famous "I love to grab them by." I have two kitty cats. Yeah, you know, and um, <laughs> it's something that Sparrow might have done. You know? Yes, I said that's gonna go right there. When I saw that, I said that's gonna go. It followed up with with can't tell one ass from the other. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and reading from behind those. Those two were brilliant. Look, as, as I say, it's funny, but it ain't funny, right? Right, right, right. And, you know, the fact that you, you pointed out that now the agencies are looking for faces, and IMG in particular, since they are so huge, they're looking for people that have a platform because now it's time to understand that it's more than just a face. What Absolutely. do you have? within your spirit to, to share with the world. Absolutely. I yes. think, you know, the George Floyd thing just kind of woke a lot of people up. Yes. And I, I think that was like really important. And I think, you know, it happened at a, at a, at a perfect time because, um, you know, people were, the pandemic, as bad as it was, we had to be, we were all in place and we all paid attention. Right. I think if it had happened any other time, it probably would have been a passing phase, like everything else that seems to happen with us. It's always just for that moment and it keeps moving. But I think um, with people being at home uh, and it really caused the movement to be um, solidified. So there's yeah. some good things to be taken from the bad as well. This is, I quite agree with you there. There's always the silver lining in truth. If it's one thing, truth has rained out of yeah. Our current situation. I'm mindful of the use of, of certain words because <laughs> in my interview, in my G session interview, I was thrown off the, the platform a couple of times. <laughs> so certain words that I want to say. Because we say it as it is. <laughs> you know, and people are learning to take it. But just to, to segue a little bit, how did you go from modeling to re owning a restaurant? Okay, so I, I worked with um, with this model, Gail O'Neill. I, I guess, I'm sure you know Gail, but we were doing, we were on a, a Macy shoot and she asked me, I was like probably about, probably eight to 10 years into the modeling and, and I, I knew that after modeling, having been on off of the regular workforce for such a long time, I knew I had to create something for myself. And I, I knew how to cook from learning from my grandmother. I actually worked as a waiter when I first started as a model. And I actually loved the restaurant industry. And so I told her I probably would do a restaurant. And her boyfriend, Brad Johnson, who was a restaurateur at the time, she introduced me to Brad. And Brad, we had a meeting. He took a liking to me. He was actually in the process of opening a restaurant in Los Angeles. And he invited me to invest with them. And I did. And it turned out that some of the other investors in the restaurant were Denzel Washington, Debbie Allen, Noam Nixon, um, Eddie Murphy. And so I became a part of this great project. And mm -hmm. I actually learned back at the house restaurant touring from Brad and his father, Howard. And I've always wanted to do my own restaurant because back there, we took care of all the celebrities. And I just felt that everybody spend the same amount of money i wanted everybody to be treated like a star so that's what i did i treated everybody perfectly so i always said if i ever open my own restaurant i would you know treat everybody as they were a celebrity i'd go to all my tables and actually i do that so 11 years ago i opened alvin and friends restaurant in new rochelle which is caribbean and, and southern in influence and it's fine dining and so i've been doing that for the last 11 years now Alvin and Friends is a beautiful restaurant and the Thank food you. is delicious. The, the cocktails are on point. And of course, art is hung right around on all the walls. And of yep. course, you know whose art it is. <laughs> but it's perfectly located 
you know, the we're writing, we're right in New Rochelle and we're right off like a two minute walk from the train. Um, you take the Metro North train and we've been doing this special, like people that's coming out from the city because now that the city's kind of shut down, people have been coming out. So if you show us your train ticket, when you come out, we buy your first uh, cocktail for you at the restaurant, you know? And so basically it, it, it negates the price of a ticket. And it's literally from Harlem, if you're in the 125th street to New Rochelle, it's literally 20 minutes on the train. I mean, it's almost like if you're going downtown um, New York, so. And I was, I was going to ask you how, you know, how have you been affected or what are you doing to combat the situation that we're in so that you can maintain your business and keep it going? Well, I, the, the best thing I ever did was like, uh, I, I had bought the building that I operate in. I bought that um, nine years ago. So that was one thing that I didn't have to deal with. So we have that. Um, and I've made adjustments where we're now delivering stuff. And, you know, like everybody was going through it. We just did the best that we can and people wanted us to do well. So they kept supporting us and we've been, by the grace of God, we've been open. <laughs> and as we wrap up, because I see, oh my gosh, time is just going. When you're having fun. <laughs> what other things are you into? Any programs? I remember. Um, yeah, um, so I'm a member of AFUI, which is uh, the American Foundation for the University of the West Indies. And we actually have our gala coming up, and it's going to be a virtual gala. So I know we don't have a lot of time, but if people can reach out to the FUI network and buy tickets, it's a virtual show this year, and it's going to be helping students to go to the university. Please support any way you can. And you are fabulous, Janice. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm so sorry that we're out of time. So I'm going <laughs> to right over to Richard. And thank you for being here. Alvin Clayton Fernandez. Thank you, Janice. Z O. <laughs> Zero. Wow, what a great story. Thank you very much for sharing. My name is Richard Pelzer. I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing for The G Project. As my business partner, Alyssa Chrisman mentioned in the beginning, uh, we are a public art project. Um, I would love to invite everyone to our website, which is gproject.org. And I ask you to please sign up for all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and now this new YouTube channel. If you are new to our YouTube channel, I ask everyone to please subscribe right there below. Um, and we would love to actually hear any comments. So please catch us every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a new story. And we ask you to please share your project. And we ask the question, what is your G status? Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon.